everybody. Thanks for joining me for episode four of an eight-part video series I'm doing to complete a sea glass mosaic on this antique church window. If you've missed my previous videos, click on the card up above and it'll take you to episode one, and then you can just watch the series all the way through. But for this one, I'm doing this pane of glass and by the time I finish this video, I'm going to be halfway through my window. This is taking me quite a while, but I will eventually get to the top and it'll be all done and I'll reveal the entire window to you. So this pane of glass is 11 and a half inches tall and nine and a half inches wide. And the pattern that I've drawn is a bunch of flowing lines. And then I'm interspersing the colors. So I have brown, green, white, brown, white, green, brown. And it's just to give that real flowing feeling in this section. And then I have a couple of big circles that I want to include. This is a green bottle bottom and a really quite large half white bottle bottom and then I have a bottle bottom that's kind of a half bottle bottom from a milk white sorry milk glass so I want to put that there and this is a green section but I want to add something really interesting so my real interesting focal point for this pane of glass is going to be this piece right here and then I'm going to put some green triangles coming out of it so it's sort of like something growing out of that little pane of glass and then I had a piece of pottery I wanted to put on it. This is just some sea pottery with some brown pattern on it. So I'm going to set that right there in the middle. And then I have a, I have a bunch of these tiny little aqua pieces of glass that kind of look like berries. They're so cool. So once those that's glued on, I'm going to pile those on top there like little seeds at the bottom of this flower type thing. And then I'm just going to work on my flowing lines. And one of the things about doing flowing lines like this, it's not a type of pattern that you really have to be committed to the lines that you've drawn. As long as the lines kind of flow nicely together, I think it's going to work fine. So I'm just going to arrange a bunch of pieces so that they flow nicely and give a real flowy feeling without having to worry too much about the lines being exact. And as long as the colors look good together, I think this will be fine. So every time I'm working on a video, I try to teach you something new or tell you something that I notice about the work that I'm doing so that you can learn from it. And one of the things that I really noticed as I was working on this piece is that I'm really making an effort to accent these great big pieces. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a tip here. Now if you look at this one right here, this piece really jumps up 
from the glass. And I, I to emphasize that, what I did was I put small pieces around it so that it really does look like it jumps up and it looks like something growing out of this really special piece of uh, milk glass here. But when I was doing this circle, I wanted the circle to kind of blend in a little bit more. So I used a lot of these pieces of brown that have some shape to them so they're not lying flat on the glass. So a lot of bottle tops or really big thick pieces help a big piece like that blend a bit. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So like on this green one here, this one isn't done nearly as well as that one. So I want to de-emphasize the outside of it a bit. So I think what I'll do is I'll move it over so it's right against the side of the frame. And then I'm going to really make an effort to pick some really large pieces of sea glass as I'm doing the edge of this. And so this is just going to help the piece of glass blend a little bit better. And I think it will really add some to the finished piece once it's done. After I do that edge around, like if you see here, I did big pieces all the way around the white, but then I put small pieces in. And I'll do the same here. I'll put big pieces around, but then I'm going to come in with small pieces after that. So this stripe here is brown, so I need brown here, and then I need white around here. So I'm going to pick out some of my white pieces that are really big and chunky here. And again, looking at ones that are really big and thick and have maybe some some of those ridges on them because they've been at the tops of bottles will really help this effort. And it'll help my great big piece here blend in a little and bit. And when I'm putting on a big piece of glass like this, I want to put on a lot of silicone. So a lot right in the middle where it sticks up and then all the way around the edge. So you see, you can be quite generous on a large piece because you want to make sure that it stays really good. Yeah, that'll hold that in place pretty good. Here's a piece that's a kick up. So it has the bottom of a bottle there. And a piece like that is really good for going around the edge because it's going to come up almost flush with the bottle bottom. And that will help that blend really well. So by filling in this little section here with green sea glass, it's going to look like the green sea glass is coming right behind that brown piece that's coming up through here. So the it looks kind of like it's interwoven a little bit, which I kind of like that look. And then it's also going to do the same with the white. Just get these pieces in place. And if you look white, right here with the white, I've got a white section coming through here. So if I put the white in here like this, it's going to look like this white is coming in behind the brown as well. So it gives that effect that this brown is coming, cutting right up through the white and the green sections. Mm -hmm. So I just want to zoom in here a little bit to show you the three-dimensional effect. So if you look at this piece right here, you can see how it just kind of pops up from the glass. And by putting small pieces around it, it really helps it pop. And then here you can see I put a row of 
brown sea glass on edge just to add a bit of an interesting detail in that brown section. And then the brown and white that are surrounding this big green one are kind of big fat ones so it helps it blend a little bit. And then it's the same on this white one over here. I put big pieces that pop up from the glass to help it blend a little bit with the overall design. So I hope you found this interesting and it's been helpful for you in your quest to create sea glass mosaic art. And be sure to join me for my next video, which will be part five. So until next time, happy sea glass hunting.